Yeah, just obviously crazy excited to be here uh, in Detroit playing for MAC championship game. Obviously crazy proud of my team. Uh, the players uh, fought through a lot this year. Uh, our league, everybody knows, is crazy balanced. There's a lot of really, really good football teams and a lot of really even football teams. And uh, our kids, with the help of the assistants, really did an unbelievable job of sticking together and persevering. Anybody who's listening to me talk about our team for the last 12 months knows how much I respect these kids, not just as players, but who they are as people. Um, and pretty, pretty, pretty amazing season to to find ways to win as many close games as those kids did. So we're super excited to be here. We're super excited to play Central Michigan. Obviously, they're they're an incredible story too. Um, and and with their one year turnaround, you know, going from one and eleven to. Uh, Mac champs uh, on their half is, is is pretty amazing with the new staff and a credit to their players, a credit to their coaches, a credit to them finding a way to melt together and work together so quickly. Uh, we know they're a great opponent. We're we're excited about the challenge. Um, we're 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 very very saddened by their their recent loss of of, of their radio guy, uh, and, and we want to make sure everybody knows from our end that we heard about that and that it's it's obviously. Uh, very, very tough situation to deal with anytime something like that happens. But uh, we, we, we're, we're excited uh, to take on the Chippewas tomorrow, and we think it should be a great game. Coach, how special is it for you to be able to be here after taking over this program, the state was, it was at, and you know, finally get to the MAC championship game? Yeah, no, it's awesome. Uh, anytime you get to play in a conference championship game, it's awesome. But obviously, if you take over a program that was 0-16, and uh, we did a good job of getting it to 22 straight uh, by losing our first six. And then just seeing the the process in the growth of our team, and uh, a lot of a lot of our seniors weren't here at the very beginning, but they were here at close enough to the beginning that uh, they've they've gone through some tough times and worked their tail off to to make a difference, and they've turned this program back around. And obviously, Miami's a very very proud football program, uh, very proud athletic department, and, and for these kids to know for the rest of their lives that they were they were a part of you know turning the bleakest years in Miami football around and getting it back uh, to have an opportunity to play in, in the MAC championship is something that they, I'm sure they'll take with them the rest of their lives. This question is for Doug and Tommy. You guys have both been around for a while, but you've never been to Detroit in the MAC championship game. Uh, are you nervous for this game more so than others, or are you kind of treating it like any other game? Um, I'm not treating it any differently, and I could probably say that about the rest of the team. We've been in a bunch of – hard games, a lot of uh, big spotlight games. You know, we take we see this as just one another one of those games. And I feel as if we were to put too much pressure on it, then we wouldn't be able to perform like we know we're capable of. Yeah, I think uh, I agree with Doug. And I'm, uh, no one's too uh, stressed out or uptight about the game. Um, we've played in some big games this year, so we're just looking forward to playing tomorrow. Coach Mike Lissette from uh, Grand Rapids. I just wanted to ask you about your time at uh, Grand Valley State and how that shaped you into the coach that you know you are today. Um, obviously, I had a great 10 years at Grand Valley State. Um, it's an incredible place. We won a lot of games, won some championships. Um, obviously, I was still a fairly young coach when I got there, was assistant for Coach Kelly. And then obviously, it was my first opportunity to be a head coach. And whenever you make a transition from any job where you get promoted to the next level, obviously there's a huge learning curve. So um, learned a lot in my 10 years, had a lot of fun. It was, it's, a, it's a tremendous place, as you well know, from being over there and uh, kind, of, kind of got me heading in the right direction in, in the coaching profession and also gave me an opportunity to be a head coach at a young age and, and kind of learn under fire and, and try to keep things going. So great experience for me. Um, every stop you make in coaching or playing shapes who you are in the future and obviously uh, a lot of the lessons you learn from success and certainly the lessons you learn from failure are things that you can improve upon in the future. For the players, how does your non-conference slate of playing at venues like Kinnick Stadium and Ohio Stadium prepare you to come into Ford Field and uh, keep your composure? Uh, it definitely prepares us, you know, obviously loud environments, a lot of hostile environments, even just other MAC opponents we played this year, they're all have been hostile environments that we've, I feel like as a team, we kind of enjoy that moment of coming into a stadium like that. And I guarantee you tomorrow it's going to be the same way. We'll see it as just another hostile environment, kind of like a road game with it being a Michigan school we're playing. And definitely we kind of – I feel like sometimes we, got, we like to thrive in those situations. It definitely brings out a, more of an edge in a lot of us. Tommy, from an offensive side of things, uh, with the young quarterback that you were protecting uh, in Brett Gabbert, just talk about what the confidence level for the offense has grown throughout the year as he's grown as a freshman this, this year. 
Um, yeah, we've always had a lot of confidence in Brett. Um, like at Kinnick Stadium, at Kinnick Stadium, it was a loud atmosphere, um, and he had a great huddle presence, and we were able to execute our offense. And from that moment on, you know, we've had all the confidence in the world in him. So. Coach, obviously the question of the week has been surrounding Brett Gabbert and his health. Um, do you still expect him to play tomorrow, and do you also have any other guys who are questionable for the game? Yeah, no, I don't. Like I said to somebody earlier this week, everybody's going to play. Um, I don't know that I could keep any of them out, uh, to be honest with you. But, no, Brett's doing fine, and he, he's going to be able to play tomorrow. And we have some other guys that are nicked up. But um, adrenaline's a wonderful thing. And, uh, again, I think if I said, hey, I, I don't think you're quite right, I think <laughs> they would choke me and stuff me in my locker and go out and play anyway. So I, all the guys that are a little bit nicked up, and, uh, you know, you're in week 13. Even the healthy guys are got something going with them right now. But um, I, th I think our kids are more than excited to be here. And like I said, I don't know that I could keep anybody out if I wanted to. For Doug, you guys find yourself once again uh, underdogs. Uh, you found that yourselves in that position for pretty much the entire season. You know, do you guys thrive in that position? Have you kind of embraced that mindset of being underdogs? I mean, we have embraced it, yes. But at the same time, we kind of we don't try to look at that. We kind of just go out there and focus on our opponents. I mean, people want to kind of say who's underdog, who's supposed to win. But obviously, any given week, any team can win. Some of the better teams have beaten some of the worst teams, and some of the worst teams have beaten some of the better teams. So if you don't play to your capability every week, you can get beaten. Doug, for you and the defense with regards to this year throughout conference play, was there a game or a day throughout the year where there was kind of that turning point moment for you guys in the season? I'd probably say... Was it NIU that was after Buffalo? Or after Ohio State? Or was it Buffalo? It was Buffalo. I'd probably say that Buffalo game, because we just came after, obviously, they put up 67, 76 on us. And that week of practice, I feel like it kind of turned for everyone. Like, we realized this is not who we are. Obviously, we let some plays get away, and obviously, they did some good things as well. But I feel like that week, we definitely all kind of came together, told ourselves, like, this is never going to happen again, no matter who the opponent is. And we just felt like that week. And then, we felt like that week of preparation definitely prepared us for the game. And then once we started playing, as you saw on the field, we started making plays. We kind of, the way we played on the field was kind of gave us some momentum. And I know weeks after that, we've looked at each other like, remember that week right after Ohio State? Remember how we played? Remember how we prepared? And we've kind of tried to just keep that bottled up and keep using that every week when we practice. Coach, obviously you want your guys to keep their composure um, throughout the game, but also it's a huge game. How do you embrace being in Detroit and playing at an NFL venue, but also treating it just like any other game? Yeah, I think your question earlier was good. Just I, one, I think being in Kinnick Stadium is going to be helpful because anyone was there that night, it's I don't think it's going to be any more electric or any less electric tomorrow. And then obviously going to Ohio State, um, Doug talked about hostile environments. And I think obviously everybody's saying it's going to be a pro chip for our crowd based on proximity and all that. But uh, Ohio State was pretty pro Ohio State crowd. <laughs> like we, we didn't get so I think our kids have been in it. And I just think. I hope it's a huge ship crowd and a huge Miami crowd. Like we're, we're, the louder, the better, the more exciting, the better. That's why you're trying to get here to play in this type of environment. So I, I think our kids are going to be excited. We've talked all week. I don't know the answer. If there's an answer, how to have that fine line where you're super excited about something, but you don't overdo it and you make senseless mistakes because you want it too bad or you're just too hyped up versus not using that extra excitement. Yes, a question to them. They're, they're way better coach speak than I am. You know, they're pretty good at it, you know. Nervous, like I was nervous, and I walked in here, and I'm like, ah, this, like this is what we're trying to do, right? Like, and it, it take that nervous energy and turn it into a positive, turn it into adrenaline, turn it into hyper focus, turn it into maybe you push a little harder, maybe you block a little harder, maybe you run a little faster. So, how to take that extra juice and use it positive, and don't don't have a bunch of personal fouls in the first quarter, and you know you're overdoing it because you're so hyped up. So, um, we've talked about it, but they're going to have to find a way within their own framework to find their balance between being excited about being here because I know they are, I know how how hard they've worked to get here, not just for one year but for multiple years, and then using that extra energy. And same thing as coaches, don't. I can't try to do too much. I got here because of players, you know, and now tomorrow I'm going to win the game because it's a big game. I got to just let my guys do what they do. We talked about it kind of Wednesday and Thursday, like, hey, we're going to play the call and we're going to play the call the best our ability. That's how we got here. And so it, it's, it's in all our minds and we're all excited, but how do you use that excitement as positive energy and not, not take away? Because you hear coaches after games, well, our kids want it too bad. Our kids, you know, they, they were too over the top, and that can happen in these types of games, and they won't know till tomorrow at noon really how they feel at that first snap. So I'm excited to see how it plays out. What's crazy? Uh, 
So, Coach, from, from last year, you had a three-year starter in Gus Ragland leading your offense, and this year you go to a transition of a, a freshman quarterback. After 12 games, what have you learned about Brett Gabbard as a quarterback, and did it surprise you what you found out this year? Yeah, I think I think we all saw it. Players and coaches saw it from the time Brett hit campus and in camp, and um, just his poise and confidence. We knew he had some ability, but a lot of kids have ability. Um, and I think it was, you know, everybody who came up to me after the Iowa game and we lost an Iowa game, we, I thought we played pretty good and gave him a really good fight. And it's not like we produced a ton, a ton of points, but we did some nice things on offense. But everybody was talking about after that game just how he handled that moment as a first-game starter in Iowa and looked very composed and didn't look jittery. And like Tommy said in the huddle, like – had poise and confidence. So it's just, I think, who the kid is. I think he's very calm. I think he's very confident. And then I think he and our offense has kind of grown together, you know, and they've, they've taken steps and steps. And kind of the Kent State game was the first game we started really getting chunk plays offensively, and we've kind of been flourishing ever since. So I, I think him and the offense, and I think we got those two freshman guards, too, that a lot of people talk about. You know, we only got a freshman, true freshman quarterback. We got two true freshman guards. And it, crazy credit to Schaefer and Rusty and what they've been able to get done this year. Um, but I always talk about that Danny stands right in between him and Skibbs and Tommy on either side. And it's been such a nice blend of the team, young guys being good players with confidence, but older guys taking those guys under the wings and supporting them because I'm sure you've had more than a couple interesting conversations with Shafe out there. So just our old and young blending together and really forming a team has been pretty special to watch this year. Gentlemen, thank you for your time. Congratulations on a great season and best of luck tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.